What about what happened in Oregon? You know, like Oregon, yes. when they passed, yes. they legalized it, and now right. they well, first of all, <laughs> they were already off the rails. Okay, <laughs> this is not like legalizing uh, drugs in a, a very. It's not like legalizing drug in San Francisco in the year two thousand. It's it's a completely different scenario. So you have these people that are really they're accustomed to tents and subsidizing drug addicts and they're they're accustomed to this very bizarre breakdown of civil society where you're seeing open air drug markets and everyone's fine with it and it's somehow or another kind and compassionate to allow this to take place everywhere. And that's what you have in Portland, right? Portland is probably one of the most liberal cities that we have, one of the most leftist cities that we have. So for Oregon to do it that way, I think it's a like an, an awesome libertarian notion to say, you know what, we shouldn't li make any of these things a crime. These are personal choices, and you can make good personal choices or bad ones, and we'll have everything. But the problem is the fabric of society, the, the, the encouragement of discipline and of hard work and of accomplishment had been eroded to the point where right. accomplishment meant that there was something wrong with you. Right. Like if you were a person that was eat the rich, tax the rich, if you were a person that had accomplished something great, it wasn't because of some extraordinary effort you put in, even if it was. It was you did something to go over other people, and that's the only way you get rich in this world. And it's just b bizarre. It's bizarre. And it, it, it bizarre. permeated Portland. Right. So when you <laughs> introduce free heroin to that, <laughs> like you're going to get more problems. It's just, and you're subsidizing people for living on the streets, which they do. I mean, I, I watched this interview where they were talking to these people in the Pacific Northwest where they moved there specifically so they could be homeless because they knew that they get money. And they, they, there's no incentive to get out of those tents. There's no incentive. There's free food and free drugs, and they give you money. And they're like, okay. Right. So that didn't fail because of the actual drug policy, right. but more of the other social policies. I think – have you ever heard of Dr. Carl Hart? No. He's a professor at – is he at um, Columbia? I believe he's at Columbia. Carl Hart was a straight – chemist like a, a guy studying chemistry and studying these substances in columbia um and a, he was a clinical researcher and along the way he started realizing that our our understanding of these drugs and the pros and cons of them had been flavored by propaganda heavily uh, particularly the sweeping act of 1970 that made almost everything illegal, which was really to target civil rights groups and anti-war people. And so this was during the Nixon administration. They made a bunch of things that were psychedelics. MKUltra, is that when that happened? Well, MKUltra was actually before, before that. It was when they were experimenting with people, okay. particularly with, with LSD. So when they started doing this, they, they made everything illegal. And now the only way you can get any of these things is through illegal sources. So you're getting them through the cartels. So if we don't have the ability to legalize things and the problem with legalization, there's a lot. It's there's no good answer here. So to keep things illegal, you're going to have fentanyl overdoses. I know people have lost their children. I know people have lost their brothers and sisters to this. It's a horrible thing that happens. You're also going to get heroin overdoses if it's legal. So Jesus Christ, like, and you're going to get more people that try it because it's legal. 